Hello everyone, welcome back to I Am Longevity. Today we're diving into a controversial topic that will challenge everything you thought you knew about cholesterol and lifespan. You've heard it before, lower your LDL to live longer, right? Well, get ready to be a little bit surprised. A recent study reveals that high LDL cholesterol may not be the grim reaper it's made out to be. In fact, if you're over 65, statins, those cholesterol low in drugs could actually be working against your longevity. You heard it right. Stay tuned as I unpack this shocking revelation, explore whether statins might be doing more harm than good. Don't miss out. Your health could depend on it. This study on the screen followed a cohort design, meaning it observed a group of people over some time to see how the LDL cholesterol levels affected their risk of dying from different causes. The researchers tracked the participants' health and LDL cholesterol levels and then compared how their cholesterol levels related to the risk of death from heart disease, cancer, and other causes. The goal was to find out the optimal LDL cholesterol level that results in the lowest mortality risk. The study focused on all adults, specifically individuals over 65 years or older. These participants were generally healthy at the start of the study and did not have major illnesses like heart disease or cancer. Their LDL levels were measured, and they were followed over time to see if and how their cholesterol levels affected their risk of dying from various health issues. In this study, the relationship between LDL cholesterol levels and mortality was found to follow a U-shaped curve. This means that both low and high LDL levels were linked to high risk of death, while the middle range of the LDLC was associated with the lowest risk. At the top left of the U-shaped curve, the red line on the screen. LDL below 2.0 millimoles per liter, which is 77 milligrams per deciliter, was associated with an increased risk of death, especially for non-cardiovascular causes like infections and cancer. The bottom of the U-shaped curve, the green line, where mortality risk was the lowest, was found at 3.3 millimoles per liter, which is 127 milligrams per deciliter. That's the cholesterol, 127. Finally, the approximate upper LDL value for the U-shape in all four graphs ranges from 4 millimoles per liter, which is 154.4 milligrams per deciliter and above, which is the brown line. You can see it on the screen. LDL levels around 3.3, which is 127 milligrams per deciliter, seems to be the sweet spot where the risk of dying from various causes is the lowest. There are other studies that confirm the results of this study. For example, this study right here identified a U-shaped relationship between LDL levels and all-cause mortality, meaning both low and high levels of LDL cholesterol are associated with increased risk of death. The lowest risk of all-cause mortality was found at an LDL cholesterol concentration of around 140 milligrams per deciliter. On the lower end, those with LDL-C levels below 70 milligrams per deciliter were found to have a higher mortality risk. And similarly, LDL levels above 189 milligrams per deciliter were also associated with increased mortality risk. Another example is this systematic review, which found that people in the highest LDLC quartiles tend to live the longest. The highest LDLC quartile typically includes LDL levels around 114 to 160 milligrams per deciliter. Now, I need to speak about a conflict of interest. We have to be transparent here. There's a conflict of interest in this present study. Several authors disclosed receiving research support from pharmaceutical companies such as Amgen, Merck, Pfizer, and Bayer, which could influence interpretations or outcomes. The thing is that I have shown other studies without a conflict of interest that substantiate the results of this present study. So I do not think there is some underhand to play here. There is clearly a pattern. I will close with these words. Not everyone's biology functions optimally with the same LDL levels. While some individuals may benefit from low LDL levels, others may have higher natural LDL due to genetic factors, and their bodies may need that LDL to maintain balance. Forcing everyone's LDL below 70 could interfere with their body's natural equilibrium, potentially leading to negative consequences. LDL has important roles in the body beyond what is commonly discussed. It's involved in hormone production, vitamin D synthesis, and immune system function. 
If someone's LDL is reduced too drastically, especially below what their body is accustomed to, this could lead to unintended side effects. One-size-fits-all approaches can be dangerous. Applying the same LDL lowering strategy to everyone assumes that everyone's physiology responds in the same way, which is absolutely not true. Just as some people are born with high LDL and are perfectly healthy, others may be at risk if their LDL is low with too much. There is evidence that overly aggressive lowering of LDL to statins, especially to levels below 50 mg per deciliter, could have adverse effects on some individuals whose bodies rely on LDL for specific biological functions. Claiming that everyone should target LDL below 70 is overly simplistic and fails to consider genetic factors, pre-existing conditions, and individual needs. Without tailoring treatment to individual profiles, a blanket recommendation could put people at risk, especially if lowering LDL undermines their unique biological balance. Lowering LDL should be personalized and based on comprehensive assessments of inflammation, cardiovascular health, and genetic predisposition, rather than universally applying guidelines that may not suit every individual. Therefore, a one-size-fits-all approach to LDL levels is not only flawed, but could be dangerous for people whose biology is designed to function optimally with higher LDL. That's just my opinion. I'm basing it on studies. I wish you all the best. Me personally, I will never take sadness, ever. In closing, you should monitor your overall health, not just LDL. Just because your LDL is high, it does not automatically mean you're going to die of a heart attack. What about the rest of your biomarkers? What if everything is in perfect range and you are healthy and you have no signs of cardiovascular disease or heart disease? You're still going to take statins? Anyway, I won't. Have a wonderful day. See you soon in my next video.